Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to a new episode of the Tabletop Engineer. This is part three of the Gunship Project. I'm going to put up here in the corner uh, a link to the original part one and then you can just watch from there. I was hoping this was going to be three parts and three parts only, but it looks like it is actually going to go to four. The reason being is I worked really hard to get this thing done and painted, but I didn't get to the painting part. I did get to the priming part, and as you can see, <laughs> this thing looks so cool in person. I hope it's coming across uh, on the video that uh, it, I'm just so happy with how this turned out. It's not an exact reproduction of the GW Thunderhawk. Uh, there's a lot of modifications on it that I did. There are some unfinished areas because I can't do them until I, until I get the painting done. Like I haven't done the cockpit yet because it needs to be black behind the windows and I want to put some clear plastic for the windows. But other than that, it is done. What I'm going to do now is take you to the tabletop and show you how I got to the final look of this. It involves some 3D printing, uh, and it involved a lot more of placement of armor, but all in all, it's done. Now, uh, all I need to do is get it painted, and there are a few little tweaks I'm going to do here and there, but nothing that should prevent me from having it done next Friday for you guys. But in the meantime, let's get to the work uh, table, and let me show you the final bit of work to get it to this point, and then at the end of the video, I will um, put up some close-up photos and more detailed photos so you can take a look. Let's go to the table. I'm just going to narrate some random comments here. Most of what you're seeing me do here is nothing I haven't done in the previous videos. So check those out earlier if you want to know how I'm sort of making this thing. It's basically a lot of, um, you know, trimming to size. I, I take measurements and then I cut and I cut and I glue and I just kept going at it. Um, here you can see I'm trying to close up the wings. I had this gap so that the wings were more three-dimensional and thick and I just you know, I just trimmed chipboard a little at a time and just kept putting it in place to see when it would fit perfectly. And once it was good, then I would glue it in place. It's a lot of trial and error and it is a little time consuming, but for something that's handmade like this, it's really probably one of the only options. Now what I'm doing here is I'm starting the creation of the gun turret placement that will go on the very top of the gunship. I have 3D printed the guns and the engines, and I'll show you those in just a second. But this is basically just a, a two-scale mount that I got from the schematics. I made a box that will be glued on the back of the, uh, of the gunship, and uh, then I'll glue the 3D printed cannon to it. Now to make that cannon, I just took a screenshot of one of the side views. And again, I've done this in previous videos, so I'm not going to go over it in detail here. But I use that screenshot to basically put an image in an application I have called Pages right here. And using Pages, I can scale that image to the exact size, which is about 19 inches long. And then I can use um, boxes like this to get the dimensions of the cannon. I can just uh, draw the box and then go over to the right and look at what the dimensions are for that particular piece. Now for the cannon, I designed it by hand. I just created it, um, nothing fancy. As you can see here, I created it in Tinkercad and then basically it was very tall so I didn't want to print it in one piece. So I broke it up into three pieces. Uh, mainly, it's it, just through my experience, when you're printing, printing tall cylinders, it's often easy to break it up rather than try to risk the cylinder tipping over during the print job when it gets really, really high. Now for the, um, for the engines, I grabbed those. Oh, you know what? Right here, what you're watching is me rotate the engine or the uh, cannon vertically so that I can export these to print on my 3D printer. All right, as for the engines, I went out to Thingiverse and I grabbed some engine pods for the Star Wars, you know, pod racer type thing. That came from a, a comment of a, of a viewer. I, I'm at a loss for the name right now, but you know who you are. Thank you very much. I grabbed a variety of them and then uh, imported them into Tinkercad and just and then just modified them based on what I needed. I didn't like the cone on the original one. It didn't have a fan turret, like the fan shroud that I'm taking here. 
So I basically just took what I want, cut and paste, uh, you know, delete what I don't want, and uh, made the engine the way I want it. Now, if you want more detail on this, I am going to make an, a narrated video, uh, a little bit longer video, and put it on the Facebook page for the Tabletop Engineer, and I'll narrate what I'm doing here so that you'll have a better understanding of, uh, of what you're seeing. Look for that on the Facebook page. All right, once those 3D things were printed, I started gluing them in place. Uh, while that glue was setting, I went up to the top part and started adding armor to the cannon placement. Um, yeah, let's see, right here I have already uh, 3D printed the engines, so I'm just going to hot glue those down to the chipboard. For the, uh, I, I printed nozzles uh, for the exhausts on the end, but in order to match them to the engines, I had to glue these little black uh, circles on, and those are actually just bases for miniatures. I glued them in, and then it gave me a place to glue the nozzles to the actual engine. At this point, it was just finishing up random stuff. Uh, I had to add some rear armor and some exhausts using the granny grating. That granny grating stuff is the best stuff for giving a technical look <laughs> to something sci-fi-ish. Um, I went back and added the wing supports, which are these angled pieces on the side that go over the engines and attach to the wings. And, um, and then I just started adding little bits and bits of detail where I noticed they were missing. Took the whole thing out to the garage and primed it and it is ready to be painted. There it is. So my version of the GW Thunderhawk uh, made from 99% chipboard and or 95% chipboard. There's some foam in it and then there's a handful of 3D printed items that include the gun and the engines and the uh, the exhaust back here, but mostly chipboard. It's um, it's not heavy, but it's not light either. It's got some heft to it. And uh, with the priming, uh, all the details sort of pops out. Now what I'm gonna be doing is trying to figure out a color scheme for it. Open to suggestions, not marine blue and probably not orc red. But uh, I don't know, I may just pick a random color from some of the paints that I have back there and see what I can come up with. But I hope you like it. It is really cool to see something that I've only seen in pictures on, on the uh, internet. And now I've got one of my own. And uh, yeah, I don't play uh, <laughs> I don't play Warhammer. But if I did, I would certainly want to find a way to get this integrated onto the table. Maybe just as a piece of scenery. But I'm hoping some of you would take this and run with it and maybe try your hand at it. Uh, you may want to start smaller with a smaller uh, ship or tank or something like I did. But I tell you, this has inspired me to do some more projects like it. I really just had so much fun um, making this. And I've still got the painting to do, so that's going to be fun too. But um, yeah, all said and done, very pleased with it. Um, very enjoyable experience. At this point right here, I would have to estimate I've put in about 25 hours on this. So... Um, you know, you could buy something and glue it together and paint it probably quick, or you can make it, but it, depending on how much uh, time you want to throw into it, uh, something at this level of detail, this took me about, so far I've got about 25 hours in, and I'm betting I'll have a little bit under 30 by the time painting is done and some extra detail work. So 30 hours, yeah, give or take. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Next week, I will have part four. It will be finishing this up with a paint job and some other detail work that I'll go into. Uh, if you will click the subscribe button below, you will be notified when a new video comes up. I try to release them every Friday at about 9 a.m., but it's not always exactly 9 a.m. So if you don't want to just have to, uh, if you just want to get a notification of when it's ready, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I encourage you to come join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page, which is where I have discussions and post random photos and things like that. I try to do live events. I'm going to try to get back to those live events, I promise, folks. I've uh, just been really busy with this and a new writing job. But uh, And then what else? Bexham's Bazaar. In about two weeks, uh, the next issue, the 11th issue of Bexham's Bazaar Gaming Magazine will be out. It's hard to believe it's all been almost a year since I started that thing. So we've just got issues 11 and 12 uh, to come out for this year. And then, of course, I'll start again in 2020. I have some changes in mind for the magazine that I hope you like. Uh, it's going to, there's going to be a little, little 
change here and there, but nothing drastic, at least in my opinion, nothing drastic. If you want to subscribe to the magazine, go to patreon.com slash Bexham's Bazaar. It's $2 an issue. And if you don't want to do through Patreon, you can go to drivethroughrpg.com and issues there are $3, including all the back issues. So um, thank you for your support of the channel. Thank you for su your support of the magazine. And thank you for coming and joining me on the Facebook page if you are already a friend or going to be soon. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. I, Like I said, I had a lot of fun doing this and I could see doing more of this down the line. It's time consuming, so I got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, it does take a lot of time. That's all I'll say. Uh, thanks again for joining me. I will be back again next week. We'll finish this thing up. And then after that, I've got another fun project that's about a third done that I can't wait to show you. Some of you may already know kind of a guess what it is, but I'm not going to say anything else. This is DM Jim. I'll see y'all in a week. Take care.